888-7753-7733-888-77-JESSE. Let me go over to Canada, heard around the world, and talk to um, Matt. Matt, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hi, Jesse. Thanks for taking my call. Yes, sir. I wanted to respond to the biblical question. What? I mean, do you recognize a wave of pain that overtakes you? Um, yeah, I noticed when I was helping my daughter uh, put her put a shirt on, she was starting to get very um, upset, and I was also feeling like um, I noticed I was also starting to get angry, and I just um, just dropped it. So um, I feel like. It's important to notice those things, especially around your children, so you don't um, transfer that to them. Interesting. I want to respond because you're making a very interesting point, but I got to wait until Sunday. Okay. And thank you for responding to that. Amazing, man. Stay with it. Stay with it. Stay with it. Can I ask you another question? Yes. Um, how, how do, how do I overcome anxiety by, or like overthinking by watching those thoughts and don't do anything about them, but see them and the father will take them away from you because you're only having the anxiety because you believe the imagination, you believe the thoughts. And once you believe it, you start to feel it. And the feeling of anxiety is what you're responding to. But if you can catch those thoughts, then you cannot have anxiety. It's impossible. Yeah, I, I, I realize that more and more I, 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 that I've kind of made up a lot of things in my head and that I've been, just been living in my imagination. Like yeah. I haven't been living in a real, uh, in reality. Absolutely, man. Um, That's why you must, you must must, if you want to be free, you got to start catching those thoughts and just relax and do nothing about it. And the Father will take them away. You want to live in the present, not in your imagination, thinking about the past or future, what you have or don't have, what others are thinking about you and not thinking about you, and you miss the party and you listen. Stay present. Practice staying present. And in the present, you cannot have anxiety, worry, doubt, fear, or suicidal thoughts or anything. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate it, Jesse. I'm, I'm going to keep uh, keep working on it. Are you doing the silent prayer every morning and night? Um, I'm doing the silent prayer at night, um, and in the morning I'll do, or I'm doing it in the morning, and then I'll do it at night uh, sometimes. And so are you doing the silent prayer every morning and night? No. And how will you become present if you don't practice it night and day? Mm, I won't be able to unless I do it morning and night. Um, Yeah, and then during the day, when you're caught up in your head thinking about what's going to happen or what has happened, just bring your mind back to your body. Your body is always present. You got to... Keep your eyes on the imagination, on the thoughts at all times, 24 hours a day. And in the beginning, it's going to be difficult to do that. But if you stay with it, eventually it'll become easy and normal. Yeah, it, it, it just like life feels a bit more, it feels more normal now. Yes. Um, before I feel like I was in a fight, like I was fighting in my head, like... You know, I wanted to do this thing, but I couldn't do it because my mind was telling me, you know, don't do it. Yeah. And my body was, I was getting feel, a feeling or saying, yeah, don't, don't do this. It's not a good thing to do. <laughs> so um, <laughs> you got to just feel like things are norm, more normal. Yeah. You must not be afraid not to trust the thoughts. Stop trusting thoughts. Yeah. I, I understand that now. All right, Matt. Uh, uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jesse. Appreciate did, everything. Did you have another question? That was it. Um, 
I mean, I guess there is one more. Like, um, how, you say to lay down your weapon, but when dealing with um, a wife or my wife, like, how do you how do you lay down your weapon, but also um, do what you want or or get what you want? You lay your weapon down by not arguing with your wife or anyone about anything. Don't argue with the imagination, the thoughts, and don't argue with your wife about anything. Let's say that you want her to take your baby out to the park. You tell her, oh, take my baby out to the park today. And if she says no, you're gonna, if you don't argue, you're going to see clearly how to deal with that situation. But do not argue because it's just two devils arguing and your situation will only get worse. What what if she gets angry easily? Let her like if I don't if I don't do this. Let her be angry, but don't you get angry back? The reason she's angry because she's ever father the devil and she need that the evil in her is causing her to get angry because it's not her, but it's the evil in her. And it it stays alive. It feels alive when she overreacts and then she can get you to overreact. You're giving life to evil. Just let her be mad. You just look at her like she got issues. She crazy. But don't you get mad back. Yeah, I I think I've been avoid like I've been trying to lay my weapon down, not fight with her, which has been good, but I've also been doing stuff um maybe that I don't want to do just to avoid her getting angry. That's the wrong so thing to I do. Should... Don't yeah. don't don't appease her at all. You're appeasing evil. Yeah. You just don't get just angry, but don't do things to make her feel better just because she's angry. You're supporting evil by appeasing it and keeping her in hell. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm just going to do what I want and, yes. and, and face that. And let her so. say it at any kind of way she wants, but don't you be a part of it. Okay. But do not resist evil, but don't try to please evil. Don't appease your wife. That's not love. Okay. I understand. All right. Thank you, Jesse. All right, Matt. All right. Thank you, buddy. All right. Bye. Okay.